GCSE required practical eight, investigating plane waves in a ripple tank, and then we'll move on to waves in a solid. So here we've got the ripple tank, and you can see that here we've got a tank of water, shallow tank of water, and there's a, a beam that's suspended on springs, and then there's a little motor with an eccentric weight on the end of it here, and that's going to rotate round and can project an image of the waves down onto this piece of paper down at the bottom. So, and you can see here we've just got a power supply for the light, and we've got here the ripple tank controller. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this on by plugging this back together. You can hear it going. You can turn the lights out. Okay, so we can see that here. See some really clear ripples there. There is a bit of a problem with this experiment, and the problem is that it's very, very difficult to measure the wavelength and the speed of these waves in any meaningful way. So we've given you an alternative. So in your laboratory books, what we've done is to provide you with some photographs of some results that we've taken from ripple tanks with a scale down the side. We've given you the frequency at which the waves were produced, and then we're going to ask you to measure the wavelength and then calculate the velocity of the waves in this table here. So the purpose of this experiment is for us to set up this standing wave on the solid string, measure the wavelength, measure the frequency from the signal generator and then calculate the wave speed. So now we have the experiment for measuring the wave speed and wavelength and frequency for a wave that's travelling in a solid, i.e. a piece of string. So here we have a signal generator attached to a vibrating post and that has a piece of string running from it which goes across this piece of wood and then a tension is provided in the string by this mass is just hanging down here. We can't really see it very well. There we are. So the idea here is that we will adjust the frequency of the signal generator until we have a what's called a standing wave, and you'll be able to see that very clearly as soon as it starts to become apparent. Here we are. You just need to adjust the frequency very slightly until you get the maximum amplitude. So you can see right in the center it's not moving at all, it's called a node, and then here we have an what's called an antinode, and here we have an antinode. Maybe I can look along the entire string to give you an idea what it looks like. So that is where we need to be, where we've got a wave that's set up, and that exists on the whole string, so we measure the length of the whole string, and then we repeat the experiment for shorter lengths of string. And by noting down the wavelength and the frequency, we can then calculate the wave speed in this material. Here we have the string shortened. You can see we've got one wavelength set along the entire length. I go back in node to antinode to node. Anti node to node. 